Okay, here we are. We're going to cut wire number two. And we're going to take and strip them back. works so sweet. What we're doing here is we're going into the injector harness and we are splicing into that the E85 kit right here. And we're running wires over. And so we have to take and splice into each one of these injector wires right here. That's how maybe too classy for me. Okay, now next step is to take each of these wires and they go this way. So the stripe goes back towards the ECM and the solid goes this direction. So we're going to strip that as well. Take and we put these uh, splices here. So the see if that's a good seat and it is. It only took me a couple tries to do this. So and then we take that and we take the stripe wire goes back towards the ECM. Put that wire in there. And we take the crimping tool. crimp that wire. Like that. Okay, there's number one. Then, we do the same thing going the other direction. Then, torch here, and we're going to take a melt. Okay, I'm now putting, doing the very last of the uh, clips here, the very last of the uh, caps. It'll go into the ECM on the car here, which should, or the truck engine, which should allow it to uh, eventually run on uh, E85 ethanol. So we're going to see how that goes, and uh, hopefully it'll work. I'm learning a lot about how to uh, cut crimp wires and uh, splice them together um, that, uh, using fancy crimping tools like this. This is a good little truck. I picked this truck up for uh, $2,500 um, back uh, last, late last year with the objective being to take and eventually Kirk convert it to run on the E85 ethanol. Um, partially as a, uh, a uh, experiment, uh, also to uh, reduce my personal dependence on imported petroleum. So realizing, of course, that most E85 today is obviously made from corn ethanol, which 
isn't necessarily the best source, but uh, we're starting to get to the point to where um, some companies are starting to manu uh, refine small quantities of, uh, of cellulosic ethanol. And uh, when we get to that point, then of course we've got um, a fuel that is not dependent on uh, uh, food-based crops, which I think is a good thing. And this is my mentor, Ben Carlson, who's making things nice and neat, taping it all up and uh, getting ready to put everything back together. So Ben, what do you think of this wild-haired idea I've got? Well, I think it's definitely progress in the right direction. Now we just have to make sure the doggone thing works. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure the module works by itself. If anything doesn't work, it might be the installation. Are you criticizing my installation? It's no criticizing <laughs> at all. Well, I'm sure there's plenty of room for that. Okay, it is, uh, it's done. We've, we've got it uh, running. It's running actually uh, amazingly smooth. Now we're still obviously on regular gasoline because they haven't put any uh, E85 ethanol in it yet. That's my next stop. So we're going to run this for about uh, another 10 minutes and then we're going to take and uh, go find us an E85 station someplace. We're advised to put in about half and half for the uh, first tank or so. Um, so we'll have, uh, you know, put in four or five gallons of regular fuel and, uh, you know, uh, a comp complementary amount of uh, E85 ethanol. After that, then, I'm told that we can go ahead and put in uh, straight just the 85 from that point on. Um, so it, uh, so far, so good. And uh, it's taken me, uh, it's about uh, a little over almost three hours now that I've been here between uh, learning how to do things and uh, putting it all back together again. So uh, all in all, it's been a, it's been a fun experience. So uh, we'll uh, continue to report and see how it goes. Thank you.